All right, everyone. Welcome back. What should we eat for breakfast tomorrow? Any significant stuff. I can't even seem to do that, though. Because whatever I say, those could end up being our last words. A clear end. Neither Saber nor I could say a clear goodbye. And now we're at the temple gate. This is my last chance. If we proceed, it'll all be over. But if we go back, maybe I can think of something that would stop me from losing her. Saber. I stop and turn to Saber. She's the same as ever. Her face is composed, but her eyes seem tense, like she's trying to hold something in. The moment I see those eyes, I am assailed by temptation on all sides. Temptation to run away. Temptation to turn back so I don't lose her. Temptation to tell her what I really want, assuring me she'll accept. Our resolve wavers. The temptations are begging, itching to be voiced. I bite my tongue. Go. I tell her, just like usual, as her master. Saber nods silently. I see the strength in her eyes, full of resolve as they always are. I won't make any requests. The same way she believes in me, I'm going to believe I made the right choice. I cross the threshold of the temple gate. There's no turning back now. I can't say anything. Not that I could say what I really wanted anyway. But I want to at least believe that this frustrated silence managed to convey my feelings. We finished climbing the long stone stairs. This is our final memory of our time together here on this earth. The summit is bathed in, crimson, in a crimson glow. Wind whips at my face, seeming to come from that red light somewhere at the rear of the temple grounds. The air is heavy with death. It reminds me of that fire 10 years ago. But it's different. Bound up in the red light, I spy something that looks like it's going to ooze out over the temple itself. It's out past the building. A glistening blackness like mucus spreads over the vivid red. The mud spreads like oil over the clear ground. It oozes over the ground, contaminating it, killing everything it touches. It's like a visible curse. Even a mage like me, still in training as I am, understands that stuff only acts on the human psyche and will only swallow human bodies. Gilgamesh stands there, haloed by the vivid red glow. He pays no mind to the blood red glow or the death shrouded blackness. The servant armored in gold waits in the middle of the temple grounds for Saber and Saber alone. Gilgamesh has eyes only for Saber. Saber is similarly focused on him. She steps forward and points her sword at the knight in front of her. Gilgamesh, what is your purpose? That sword, is used to the sword and the sword. What do you want to do? You don't want to do anything, right? As if to answer, the Golden Knight raises one arm. At the same time, a shimmering haze forms behind them. The King's treasure, hundreds of noble phantasms, are ready in that haze like bullets loaded into a gun. Saber 
泣きむせぬ顔を踏みつけその体を染め抜くほどの泥を飲ませもだえ死ぬに耐えきれず俺の足元にすがりつくその汚れきった姿をなよく言ったならばその身が同じマズルをたどろうと異論はないな英雄を She takes another step. Sipper walks right into range of all those noble phantasms. This isn't a battle I can help with. No ordinary human could step into this battle between Saber and Gilgamesh. So, t h a Saber. I don't know if I can help with it. I'm not sure if I can help with it. I'm not sure if I can help with it. I'm not sure if I can help with it. ことみねに用があるのなら早々に消えろ。やつは祭壇で貴様を待っている。ことみねに用があるのなら早々に消えろ。やつは祭壇で貴様を待っている。ことみねに用があるのなら早々に消えろ。やつは祭壇で貴様を待っている。As I run, I hear the sound of Saber's deadly battle beginning. Deep in the grounds, behind the Yoda Temple's main building, is a large lake. It's been untouched for a long time, like it seems sacred, like it's inhabited by a dragon god. The lake's clear, blue water is so pure and clean, with not a trace of cloudiness. At least that was until yesterday. The lake is far from pure now. Red phosphorescence spreads out before me. It is a sea of dark, murky tar. End. A hollow chasm yawns in midair, the body of a young girl floating near, an offering. <laughs> I've been trying to remain calm all this time, but that sight drives me over the edge. I stop and glare at the enemy. よく来たな、エミヤシロ。最後まで残ったただ一人のマスターよ。The ends of his lips curl up in a smile, and he spreads his arms in greeting. Our final battle will be fought here. This will be the summoning altar in his holy grail war. We're about 10 meters apart. As soon as I take another step, the battle will begin. I don't know what kind of mage Kotamina is, but he likely uses projectile weapons like Tosaka. On the other hand, my only option is to get close and punch him in the face. Even with Tosaka's dagger concealed behind me, I still need to get close. Once the battle starts, my only option is to rush him and stab him in the chest. Before that, I need to do something about Ilya. As long as her life lasts, then Ilya is still alive. So, if you don't have to kill me, then you can kill me. If you don't have to kill me, then you can kill me. If you don't have to kill me, なるほどお前にはこれが私の望みに見えるわけかさすがは桐継の息子だなよもや二代にわたって思い違いを続けるとはだ,だとこの泥は私の手によるものではないこれは聖杯より溢れる力本来は万能であるはずの無色の力だそれを黒く染めるなど人の力ではできぬこの聖杯はな
はじめからこうなのだ開けてしまえば最後再現なく溢れ出し最悪を巻き起こすそれがこの聖杯の正体だ<笑>この中にはあらゆる悪性人の世を分け隔てなく呪うものが詰まっているそれを操ることなど誰にもできん What is he talking about? If that's true, he didn't become a master because he had a wish to fulfill. But instead, just so he could open this thing? I grind my teeth and glare at him. He smiles wider. So, then. She, te you, not a ba, go ra k u d a o It's such a simple answer. Tate. <laughs> わからないのか例えば音楽だ歌を楽しいと思うのはなぜだと思うエミアシロ<笑>なんだってそんなでは本はどうだ物語が人を引きつけるのはなぜだと思う Why? I've never thought about that sort of thing before そう考えるまでもないあらゆる娯楽人間を喜ばせるものそれらが楽しいのは単に人間が作ったものだからだよいかあらゆる創造物は人間のうちより生じるものつまるところこの世で最も愉快なものとは人間に他ならないむき出しの人間こそが最高の娯楽となるそれに比べれば彼らが生み出す娯楽など二次的なものだそう音楽も物語も愛憎も憐憫も信頼も裏切りも道徳も背徳も幻想も真実も全て全て抱きすべき不純物に過ぎるそのようなもの所詮は残りかすに過ぎぬ二流の娯楽私が楽しみたいのは人間そのものでなそのような余分なものなどもはや口に合わんそのためには営みなどという贅肉はそぎ落とさなければならない相馬灯というものがあるだろうそれと同じだ人間は死の瞬間にのみ価値がある生存という助走距離を持って高く飛び空に届き尊く輝くものその瞬きこそが私の望みだそれがお前の求めた質問の答えだお前たちが平穏を糧にするようにこの身は星の光を食べて生きている Seeing the priest give such a sermon, his arms spread wide, is strange to say the least. A chair runs down my back, but not from what he said. Seeing him like that, talking about human beings, and seeming somehow sacred is what's giving me chills. Somebody, oh my god. Ah, 10年前の火災は悪くなかった小規模ではあったが通常ではありえない刺激に満ちていたからだそう私が望むものなどその程度だあのような地獄にこそ魂の炸裂人における最高のきらめきがあるそれはお前自身も体験したことではないかなエミアシロどうだ無念のまま朽ちる人間の叫びは胸に迫るものがあっただろう<笑> Bullshit That day How could he ever describe the hell of a day like that? 理解してくれたかいびつな形ではあるが私ほど人間を愛しているものはいない
ゆえに私ほど聖杯にふさわしい人間もいまい The priest smiles, pleased with himself. She's saying that he thinks all those people dying helplessly was a wonderful, beautiful thing. So you could look at. I focus on my feet. Every muscle in my leg tenses, ready to break into a sprint. I search forward as fast as I can. He's a little less than 10 meters away. If I just head straight at him, I can. I throw myself sideways. I want to just kill him. But my instincts kick in, saving me from death. I go tumbling across the ground, scrambling to look up. <laughs> I glance back at where I'd just been running. The ground is on fire. The dark mud spreading over the lake is steaming. It's like a dark carpet. The mud coils and lunges at me, snapping like a whip. It leaves a searing welt on the ground. Yeah. I leap out of the way of the black mud as it strikes at me once again. To hell with the darting around blindly. This bastard's intent on killing me. I reposition myself, keeping an eye on the lake. I'm no closer to Kotomine. Looks like he's gonna keep me 10 meters away. That muddy tentacle seems to be able to stretch endlessly. It follows no matter how far I retreat, and it's not the only one. Cool. He's probably remembering what happened with Lancer when I say that. Kotomine laughs as if impressed. So これ以上先延ばしにする必要はない。正直に言うとな、エミア氏。私はお前に期待していたのだ。リンがお前を教会に導いたよ。運命すら感じた。お前があの男の息子と分かり、内面まで似通っていると知った時の喜びなど分かる
she pressed the attack on the Golden Knight. He stumbles backward, overwhelmed by her skill and ferocity. Her sword dances. So titanic is the strength behind her every blow. Each could shatter boulders, smash down the walls of even the most impregnable fortress, and yet... See? The myriad deadly weapons appearing from behind her enemy turns aside every strike. Hey! Shitsukoi! Gilgamesh slips back from the onslaught, another sword in his hand. <laughs> it's easy enough for her to repel his strikes, but she can't meet his attacks directly. Each of the enemy's weapons has abilities she simply does not know. Being struck by a weapon and not knowing what it might do is suicide. <laughs> Saber steps away from her cornered enemy to compose herself. Gilgamesh, on the other hand, is not at all troubled and picks himself up. It's funny, I could have sworn there would be background music here. Or maybe it's not in this particular, uh, what you call, installment of the game. Gilgamesh shows no sign of fatigue. To him, this battle is merely a bit of entertainment. He can't very well feel nervous or tired when he knows with perfect certainty that he will win. It is another matter entirely for Saber. She knows that her only shot at victory is now. Before her enemy starts taking this seriously. She needs to defeat Gilgamesh before he can use Ea. Or she will lose. And so even knowing that it may be impossible, she does not relent in her onslaught, giving no thought to her own stamina. This isn't the first time she's cornered her enemy. Or the second. But she's never been able to break through his wall of noble phantasms. <laughs> あるじに忠誠を誓うのはいいが、それも限度があろう。今頃あの雑種はコトミネに殺されている。もはやお前が戦う理由はなかろうよ。私の主は健在だ。あのような あれの相手は俺でも手こずるのだぞ。お前ならいざ知らず。あのような小僧が1分と持つものか。お前は俺には勝てぬし、あやつでは琴峰に勝てん。敗役を誤ったな。お前が聖杯に挑んでいれば。there is no amusement in the Golden Knight's eyes. He's serious. But that's wrong. To Saber, the choice itself was a mistake. まさか。これが正しい選択だ。私は貴様にな the air around Gilgamesh twists and distorts. More and more noble phantasms appear behind him. She adjusts her grip on her sacred sword. In truth, there is a way. There's only one way to defeat that Golden Knight. For her plan to succeed, certain conditions must be met. Even if she takes out Aya, he will still be able to defend against her attack if he has any energy left. She would also have to take Aya's attack head on again to be sure whether it's even possible to defeat. But there is no other way to win. It's just a matter of how to spin that thin thread of hope into real victory. Normally, her intuition would show her the best route, and she would act in accordance with that in what she sees. But that intuition is no help now. Perhaps her chances for victory are so slim that her intuition cannot show her the path. <laughs> but she still has to fight. She has to keep fighting for Shiro, who surrendered his own defense by returning the sheet to her. 
She cannot let this man defeat her. So ka. どうやら決定的な敗北でなければ納得がいかぬと見える。Even more weapons appear behind Gilgamesh. Every single one aims towards Saber, moving without Gilgamesh even touching him. For only the hilts are visible. But now, the blades emerge, awaiting their master's command. This is the way knights should fight. Gilgamesh was never a swordsman. His many noble phantasms are deployed within time and space and become bullets under their master's command. This is why he is an archer. He is the strongest in that regard. <laughs> With a single command, a rain of swords descends on her with godlike speed. Each of them possesses its own special, fatal power. Like a champ, she's trying to repel him. She evades every single one as if gracefully slipping between falling leaves. A sword from the front, a spear from the left, pole arms from above and below, a three pronged sword sweeping at her in an arc. A hammer larger even than her streaks toward her like a meteor. She blocks, parries, dodges, and twists away from the final attack. Saber's breathing is labored, and she struggles to regain her ground after being put on the back foot. At that moment, she sees something behind her enemy. Behind Gilgamesh. 47 noble phantasms are already deployed, all at the ready. She leaves with all her might. As if to prevent her from escaping, a flare of noble phantasms races toward her, tearing up the earth. A torrent of noble phantasms slams into the ground one after the other. Her armor is shattered, her gauntlet is split open, and even her greaves are impaled. Saber manages to avoid sustaining any fatal wounds, but in that moment she sees something even worse. Beyond the reign of noble phantasms, as if to finish off his exhausted prey, the King of Heroes draws his favorite sword. Saber lets gravity carry her back to the ground. She lands hard and immediately pours magical energy into her sword. But she isn't sure she can make it in time. The wind howls. The blade of light emerges as she raises her sword without waiting for the wind to finish unraveling. Saber doesn't bother deflecting the rain of noble phantasm. She simply swings her sacred sword with all her might and all the swiftness she can muster. She's too late. Gilgamesh sweeps his other noble phantasms aside and swings Aya. I like this quick back and forth between the two. I try to kick away the mud clinging to my ankles. My clothes are burnt and my skin is exposed. I jump away from the lunging tentacle. I can't feel my mud coated right ankle, and I wasn't entirely sure I even still had my right leg until I used it to leap away. I check my body while I roll. Ankle? Okay, yeah, it's still there. I just can't feel it. If it's more or less intact, I can probably still run. I jump in another direction to avoid the mud's relentless attacks. Beside me, I hear a splash. The scent of burning earth wakes my dizzy head and I push myself back up to my feet. The burning sensation sears away down my back. I shake it off and jump to the closest clear ground. The mud's pursuit relents. I can no longer see any of the black mud that surround me, surrounded me. I bite my lip. I dodge and ran all over the place, but in the end, I'm right back here. I calm my breathing and look up at him to at least show he hasn't broken my spirit. 
But Demina has not moved at all. He's just watched me running around. 